water signs and welcome to your February readings. It's really nice to be back. I hope you're all well. Um, just bear in mind that these readings are all going to be general today, so they won't resonate for everyone. But other than that, I will see you in your reading. Hi Pisces and welcome to your reading. So what is going on for you guys then this month? So <clears throat> this looks really promising actually. Um, for you guys. I feel like, okay, I feel like whatever's been holding you back and preventing you from moving forward, for most of you, this is going to be emotions that were tied to your past or past experiences that have been maybe cropping up, coming to the surface as they always do from time to time, right? I feel like these things, you're leaving them behind and you're moving forward. Your first card out is one of my favourites. It's the Phoenix. I love this card. It's very powerful as well. And it is what it looks like. It's the Phoenix rising from the ashes. So I feel like, again, there's this feeling of breaking free. And I feel like what you're breaking free from are your own fears and your own... I want to say sort of illusions of what's been blocking you. You know, sometimes we can convince ourselves that things are in our way, that we can't accomplish certain things, that we can't reach our target, when really what's really blocking us is ourself, right? So I feel like whatever's been holding you back, and for some of you, what it really comes down to is fear. And what's interesting is that Aquarius got something similar in that respect. They had um, a fear of rejection. In your reading, it's a fear of failure. But whichever way you look at it, it's fear, right? And more often than not, the reason behind why we don't go after what we want, usually the core of it is fear. Um, and I feel like it's the same for you. A fear of failure. So I feel like due to past experiences that you may have had, and the memory of those experiences is what's been preventing you from taking steps forward and trying out new things or pursuing certain avenues that interest you, really putting yourself out there. It's You've been holding yourself back because of what you've been through before. And that's where the fear comes from, right? Because when you've had disappointing experiences which let's be honest everyone <laughs> has had disappointing experiences at some point or another sometimes those experiences can stay with you and can convince you that the outcome that you want is not possible or that it's pointless going after what it is that interests you because chances are it's not going to lead to the result that you want when the reality, that's not the case. It's just fear talking. It's fear convincing you, you can't do this or you won't get what you want. Now you've got the eight of cups here as well. So again, I really like this for you because I feel like what this represents, for some of you, it may be something more specific, but I think, I think for the majority, it's symbolic of you leaving behind any emotional baggage that you've been carrying around from your past. This is about you leaving behind any experiences that you may have been projecting unknowingly, knowingly onto new experiences, which we all do consciously or subconsciously. I feel like it's been very difficult for you to see a future where history won't repeat itself and I think that this is something that is changing for you in February is your perspective and I just feel like you're breaking free of the fear and you're taking steps forward towards what it is that you want a new adventure and I feel like it's perfectly timed as well because obviously although for the majority of the month we will be in Aquarius season it is the start of Pisces season in February so that transition into your time into your season I feel like this is almost like the preparation for what comes next so this season of Aquarius I feel like is a time for you 
to really drop the emotional baggage and the fear and the wounds of the past so that by the time it comes around to your season, you'll be ready to embrace whatever that brings you, which I feel like is something different, a new experience, something that won't resonate or relate to your past in any way, which is probably where the fear comes from. I say this a lot, but although when we've had difficult experiences in the past, you would think that if something brand new presents itself that we've had no experience with, that that would make us happy and calm and excited, it can often trigger fear because although the difficult experiences were, th- were just that, you know, they were difficult, they were familiar. So there's comfort in the familiar, even if the situation itself is a difficult one. As soon as something new comes along, a new energy, a new person, a new career, a new interest, as soon as something like that happens, if it's not something that we've had before, or it doesn't relate to anything that we've experienced before, it can trigger the fear because we have nothing to relate to. We have nothing to pull from, from our past that makes us go, ah, I remember this, I know how to handle it. And so there is a bit of discomfort in that then, which can trigger the fear. But I feel like as February goes forward, you're gonna find it a lot easier for you to just try. (laughs) I feel like you're gonna find it a lot easier to take risks and a lot easier to just be present and trust the steps that you're taking are gonna lead you somewhere good, even if you can't see the full picture yet. And that's because you're dropping the fear and dropping the emotional baggage and not allowing those things to hold you back anymore. So I feel like this is a really promising month for you guys where you're gonna feel, there's a part of you that's gonna feel brand new as well with this energy coming through. You know, you're still gonna feel like yourself. You're still gonna feel, you know, that some parts of you are familiar, but you're gonna have a new energy, a new outlook and a new approach, I think as well. It's interesting as well because this fear of failure is the number nine. And I always say this about the number nines, but to me, nines are very independent energies. Um, They represent the individual. And so again, this comes down to your relationship with yourself and it always has. If you've gone through a period of time where certain experiences that you've had in your past, the, the emotional consequence of that has been stirred and has been you know, presenting itself to you, I feel like the realisation is it was all me. It was all coming from me. It wasn't to do with, you know, external factors, this feeling or this this blockage, the illusion of a blockage being in front of me was all coming from me, which means that I can take control of it. I can remove it. It's in my hands. So I feel like you're taking back your power and I feel like you're taking action next month. Um, And dropping, another way I want to talk about this as well is that I feel like if there's any drama, problems, difficulties, you know, um, conflicts or arguments, I don't think they're going to be yours this month. (laughs) I don't think they're going to be yours. I think they're going to be other people's. I feel like you are going to kind of have a handle on your own stuff. But I think that there will be a temptation because of that, as there always is, I think, A, for a Pisces and B, for people who are quite settled, comfortable, stable, to jump in and help other people when they're in a crisis. Now, it doesn't mean that you're necessarily going to deal with people who are in a crisis. That might be a bit extreme, but you could be approached or find yourself in a position to help other people who are going through some stuff. And that's, you know, I will never discourage you to help or discourage you to be supportive of other people when they're going through their own things. However, remind yourself 
that it is not your responsibility to fix other people's problems. It's not your responsibility to, you know, to change the way people are behaving. It is only your responsibility to do that for yourself. And to just remind yourself of that this month, because I feel like there could be some um, situations for some of you where you may be tempted to kind of jump into the mix when dealing with other people and their problems or their situations that may be quite painful or difficult for them. But because you're going to have this surge of energy and feel a bit more empowered what you don't want to do is burn that out so quickly as a result of involving yourself in other people's situations um, and to save some of that for yourself because it's meant to be for you and your life, not to, you know, use on everyone else. Um, so I think, you know, in terms of helping other people, be aware that, you know, you need to find a balance if you're going to do that. Find a balance between helping others versus helping yourself. That's going to be really important for you. So let's look at the phoenix quickly. It says freedom from suffering and past karma, reincarnation. So again, freedom from suffering, freedom from emotional baggage, freedom from wounds, from difficulties of the past, freedom from those things, letting those things go, moving forward. And it's, it's not a case of ignoring these things. It's not a case of just pretending that these things haven't been a part of you or haven't made you who you are. It's more a case of you've looked at them, you've witnessed them, you've acknowledged them within yourself. And now that you've done that, you've processed it, now you can move forward. So it says... The essence of the phoenix is with us when we realise we have been suffering too long and something must change. We take a stand and decide to live consciously instead of being driven by the unconscious mind and its long list of fears. So again, there is this um, feeling of I've kind of had enough of my own stuff. <laughs> I've kind of had enough of my own baggage and my own rubbish and I just kind of want to leave that alone now and focus on where I'm going next and newer experiences right so it's it's almost that feeling of when you get a bit fed up with yourself for you know for focusing too much on what's been and gone focusing too much on you know pain or what could go wrong and just kind of getting a bit fed up with yourself and just deciding actually I'm in control here I've looked at this, I've acknowledged it, I don't need to dwell on it anymore, I can move forward. And kind of, you know, again, being conscious, not being driven by the subconscious anymore, not being driven by those subconscious fears. Yeah, so I feel like this is really good. Um, and again, I feel like it's a case of <laughs> not just exchanging your emotional baggage with someone else's emotional baggage okay so making sure because i think that pisces do have a tendency to do that sometimes is that there is this desire to always help to be of service and i think that just making sure that we're not just exchanging one to another okay so fear of failure it says you are so scared that you might fail that you are not making the moves you need to make in order to succeed don't let fear be the reason you fail so yeah, don't let that fear stop you from doing what you want to do because fear is the illusion, right? So the need, but I, th I feel like you understand that next month. I don't think that that's such a, I think it's, it's come up because I think it's the only thing that you're going to have to work through next month, you know, because I feel like most of it you've already worked through, you've already looked at. I think this is just the only last little thing that could get in your way now if you let it so your advice is seahorse spirit and it says watch and wait so again it's a case of even if you don't have the full picture yet don't worry just watch and wait wait and see see what happens see where it takes you be present 
There's no need to kind of have it all planned out right now. Just take it one step at a time and you'll get there. But this is also about what I was saying earlier about not involving yourself in other people's baggage and in other people's dramas. Oops. It says, hovering gracefully, the seahorse observes with the perspective of one who is not engulfed by the drama, remaining at a distance from all the turbulence. Seahorse spirit appears at this time to remind you of the need to be neutral and gain perspective. So yeah, that change of perspective again, that kind of almost looking at yourself, your life from an outsider's point of view, almost like it's not you at all. And seeing, you know, we, we've, we all know that phrase, you know, looking at things with a fresh pair of eyes. And sometimes you can only do that with yourself if you pretend like you are not you, that you're a friend that's, you know, that you're looking after or a family member that's going through something and how would you handle that if it was someone else? Um, it says your message from Seahorse Spirit is not my circus, not my monkeys. Again, it's not my drama. It's not my baggage. It's not my thing to fix. It's someone else's. So having a, a bit more of a detached you know perspective and position next month when it comes to other people just because i think you you're you're kind of fresh to come out of dealing with your own stuff that you don't want to be plummeted back in but this time with someone else's that's not actually your responsibility even if you are tempted to jump into the fray and try to fix things, the best way to serve yourself and others right now is to remain calm and simply watch and see. Whatever your query, Seahorse Spirit asks you to take a step back from it, be willing to explore things from different angles rather than a single one, and just observe what is possible. From the perspective of the position of the neutral observer, you will discover a myriad of opportunities and a deeper understanding of what you seek and why, and you will know beauty truth love and wisdom so again the neutral observer you know looking at things as though there's no emotional connection there there's no tie that you have there or vested interest that you have but more so looking at things from this neutral point of view that allows you to see things with more clarity and again i feel like this is setting you up for your season so i think that this is almost just the the beginning stages of this chapter for you um but just not to use this surge of energy up too quickly <laughs> before you've had chance to use it in a productive way okay so i'm gonna leave it there and i will speak to you all again soon bye hi cancer and welcome to your reading i hope you're all doing well so what is coming up for you guys then okay so <clears throat> This kind of reminds me of, um, I think it was the Libra reading, I wanna say, kind of reminds me of that to a degree. Um, there's a similar theme going on. I feel like, okay, some of you, there's gonna be some sensitive energy coming up um, in February, I feel. When it comes to, I wanna say, some of you are either gonna be falling into the comparison trap so that's something to be aware of, meaning um, you're looking at other people and what they have and wishing you had that as well. Or people are doing that because of what's going on in your life. Could work both ways as well, because a lot of people have this, the grass is always greener energy to them, right? Um, so you either have something that someone else wants or you could be looking at other people who have something that you don't have and you know feeling a certain type of way about that i think you know when it comes to words like jealousy envy resentment and and words like that i think we have we can become a bit defensive to those words and i think that's because of the perception that or the projection of what so many people put out there about those words, myself included, I've done it before in the past. Having emotions like jealousy, envy, resentment, these are all perfectly normal emotions. 
that we all feel about different things every now and again. And so just because we have those emotions occasionally does not make us a bad person. It doesn't mean that, you know, we're in the wrong. It doesn't mean that it's something that we should be judging ourselves for or judging other people for. They're very normal, natural emotions. And I feel like some th- that kind of energy is coming up in February for one reason or another. Like I said, it seems to be some kind of comparison trap, whichever way you look at it, whether it's your emotions stirring as a result of you looking at someone else's life or vice versa. So take it as it resonates, but it's definitely something that's coming to the surface this month. I feel like as well, it's got something to do with maybe a past event or past circumstances that haven't yet fully been resolved. Um, And, you know, sometimes, let's say, for example, we've had a fallout with someone. We then look at them and or look at their social media or something, you know, their (laughs) their kind of fake life, so to speak, or only half of what's going on with them. And we see them happy and doing really well. And we can have this perception then that that person, you know, never thinks about what what's happened or that person's you know um what's the word that person is indifferent about whatever's happened within that connection when the reality is that might not be the case it's just might be that that person is not showing that online or that person's not saying that to your face and you know it can all these assumptions can stir up a lot of negative feelings And so I feel like there is something here where there's been an unresolved event, possibly with a family member, but not necessarily, um, that is still healing or still needs to be healed. I feel like um, with this Ten of Cups being here, I feel like this is what either you have that someone you know wants or you want that someone else has. This type of Ten of Cups lifestyle, you know, like happy families, emotional fulfillment, you know, this is like the running off into the sunset vibe. And I feel like for some of you, either you feel like other people have that, but you don't, and that's stirring up these kind of feelings, or again, you have this and someone else is perceiving it as perhaps being perfect or ideal and it's stirring up some kind of jealous energy within them. But it is happening for this group with one party or another. And I think that this, it, these feelings that are stirring to the surface, the advice for you today is snake spirit, which is time to heal. So whatever this is bringing to the surface or bringing to the forefront, is there for a reason and it's time to figure out where it's coming from. And even if you know where it's coming from, it's time to really sit with those feelings and work through them um, and process them. It's it's interesting because I've just done the Pisces reading and there seems to be this theme of emotional baggage for water signs and working through some of that emotional baggage. Now, Pisces seem to be coming to the end of that in their reading you seem to be in the midst of it or it's something that's coming to the surface a certain part of healing that needs to be done right because there's so much so many parts of us so many experiences that we've all had so many things that we've been through that we need to look at every now and again and this is just one part of that for you so i feel like it could be um it's kind of reminded me of like sibling rivalry as well that type of energy or um family baggage for some of you it kind of gives me that impression it could be one of them situations where family life was difficult growing up and you look at other families and wish that you'd had what they had or um you want that for yourself in your life now and want to create that kind of family life in your life now because you didn't have that when you were younger, right? So it, it could be something along them lines as well. But what what's kind of the odd one out here is the indecisive card. 
you've got indecisive. It says you have been avoiding making a decision about something either out of fear or because you do not know what you want. It's time to step up and make a choice before you lose all options. Now, you know, it could be a case of... I feel, I feel like for some of you, part of this is to do with who do you trust or who do you let into your space, um, especially with that Scorpion in reverse energy. I think part of it is to do with that. I also, you know, so for some of you, it's a case of you maybe want a certain type of lifestyle, but you also want another type of lifestyle. So you, it's choosing between two different lifestyles, but maybe not being able to blend both of them. You know, this idea that, you know, I do want, I want a big family and I want, you know, a nice house and, and the traditional kind of lifestyle. And then another part of you might want the freedom to roam and the freedom to, to travel and explore and, you know, be single or, you know, and do things that way. So it could be the indecisiveness about how you want to live your life or how you mesh all the things all the aspects of your life that you love together how you make them work together but i do feel like with this snake spirit as well being 55 you know fives can be um they're an energy of change and change is obviously very difficult sometimes but i think the fact that this has come up is a good thing because i feel like what's happening the goal here is to resolve the past and resolve any old resentments, old feelings that are more lower vibrational and negative, kind of put a, put an end to those emotions, close that chapter, so that this can be something that is then experienced. This is something that can then be created. But perhaps with this indecisive energy, there's that feeling of not knowing why it's not happened or why it's not come about, why whatever your ideal type of situation actually is, why that's not come about and I feel like the reason behind it is to do with the past and unresolved issues, unresolved emotions and tensions that need healing before this can be something that is established and created and the thing is I mean I had to learn this lesson recently myself is that you can get to a point where you think oh no I've dealt with that or I've you know, I know it's still there, but I, it's not influencing me like it used to. But the thing about healing is that until something shifts and changes in your, in your life, you aren't always aware of what's still lingering in, within you. You aren't always aware of what is still guiding you forward, you know, and what's still dictating your behavior and your reactions to things you aren't always aware of that until something shifts and I feel like there is something unresolved within you that's still influencing you and potentially blocking you from having this type of lifestyle that you want and your kind of you know the picture that you have in your head of whatever you want your life to look like there is something still blocking you from having that and it's something unresolved within you that's going to be coming to the surface I think particularly throughout February and just know if that's the case if you feel certain emotions and like I said emotions are perfectly normal and natural and there's nothing to be you know embarrassed about or ashamed of or defensive about you know emotions we all have them and we we feel all of them at some point in life right and they're perfectly normal and natural and so it's just about understanding where they're coming from when they crop up figuring out the core of them and just allowing yourself to feel your way through them sometimes as well. But this is something that's definitely going to be your focus in February, especially with snake spirit here. It's like, you know, if you think about snake shedding the skin, that's what you're going to be doing. You're going to be shedding some old emotions away to, you know, free yourself to have something that looks a little bit more like this. And also the feeling of the Ten of Cups, because it's not just a thing, it's an emotion. And the Ten of Cups is emotional fulfillment, right? It's having, I want to say, all your ducks in a row. It's having, you know, all aspects of your life where you want them to be. Okay, so 
Scorpion in reverse, jealous, resentful and unresolved. The word competitive is also in Scorpion as well. And then to bring into balance honesty and forgiveness. So yeah, old resentments, old arguments, old, you know, whatever. <laughs> These things are, are trying to come to a close so that it creates the space for this Ten of Cups and the feeling of the Ten of Cups as well. Because it's not just something to be created, it's something to be felt. So it says... They focus on an unresolved event from the past, usually a situation where they were left feeling burned. It's time to come clean about your feelings so everyone can heal and you can get back to your usual fiery but fun self. So yeah, this is about kind of clearing the air and clearing out the old baggage and the old emotions that are still kind of lingering to create a clean slate and to, you know, I'm kind of looking at this scorpion card and how sort of black and dark it is and I want to say even like dusty <laughs> kind of dusty energy and when you clear the air you know everything's bright and it's shiny and it's light outside and you can see for miles and there's nothing kind of you know fogging up your glasses <laughs> you just you know you're free of whatever's sort of uh, bringing a bit of a dark cloud into your life so I feel like if you notice these emotions coming to the surface, use it as an opportunity to clear it away so that you can experience some, you know, a different energy, a, a more higher vibrational energy, something that then helps you create the lifestyle that you want to have. And if you're unsure of what that is, I feel like just give yourself time, you know, give yourself time, the answers will come, but you don't need to pressure yourself to make you know, big decisions by a certain point. It's all on your schedule. Okay, so let's look at the snake spirit card. It says time to heal. All of us need healing at times. And when snake spirit appears, it is time to repair, renew and replenish yourself and your vulnerable heart. Self-care and maintenance work are needed so that your vitality can arise. Give yourself the space to nourish your own well-being. Vulnerability is necessary for friendships and partnerships to work, which means all of us will have tender emotions at times. Be gentle with yourself and others now. Shed the past and step up into a new way of being, for vitality is rising in you. This might be a good time to honour the work you have done to heal, grow and repair any damage within you, within those you care about and within your community. Celebrate together how far all of you have come in your healing journey and all that you have created. Unburden yourself of anything that no longer supports wellness, prosperity, positive relationships and well-being and open the door for healing to occur. Okay, so I am going to leave it there, but I really hope that was helpful. I hope you all have a good month and I will speak to you soon. Bye. Hi Scorpio and welcome to your reading. I hope you're all doing well. Um, so I'm going to dive right in. Okay, busy month <laughs> busy busy month okay i feel like you guys it's like there's a door in front of you and on the other side of that door is the start of something that you want it's like the start of a new chapter it's the beginning of you know the next part of your life so to speak but this door is in the way there's a door in the way and I feel like part of the reason why that door is in the way is because of you. I feel like it's because you're not quite ready to open that door. But I also think it's circumstantial and certain circumstances you may feel as, as though are either slowing you down or getting in the way of you opening that door into the next chapter of your life. Now, you've got Eagle. Now, Eagle is a very powerful card, actually, but it does represent karma and it represents challenges. Now, I feel like you're going through a phase in your life right now where you're learning a lot. You're experiencing something that you may not have experienced before. It's a bit of an unknown. You've got a few cards of sort of unknown territory here. And I think there is a little bit of apprehension on your part of what you're stepping into because it is new to you. And anything that's new to us can feel like a challenge. It can feel 
overwhelming. It can feel like we're, you know, we're walking into something blind. We don't really, you know, we don't really know what we're doing, but we're just kind of trying to figure it out as we go along. But I feel like <clears throat> there is some part of you that's holding back from really fully investing into this new part of your life with this fool in reverse. The fool doesn't normally hold back. He kind of just leaps into things. He doesn't look where he's going. He just kind of goes for it and see what's gonna happen, right? He doesn't really have a plan. In reverse, I feel like there is, there is this something new but there is also apprehension because you may not feel quite ready for it or you may feel like you're too overwhelmed by it to really just let yourself go and really just go for it. So it feels like a bit of an in-between phase of getting you know, to this part of your life that you're trying to get to, but also not fully being ready to or not fully being able to let go of your previous chapter in order to do that. And I think that there's some fear involved. It kind of reminds me of the Pisces reading, which said fear of uh, failure. And I think that was actually mentioned in one of your cards. I can't remember which one. Um, this fear of failure, this fear, fear of things not going to plan can often prevent us from you know, taking the chance in the first place or taking that leap in the first place. We're worried about the outcome. We're worried about how things are going to go. So we don't try or we don't, we might move forward, but we move forward so slowly when we feel like the outcome is certain and where we can bank on something happening in a certain way. So especially because you've also got gazelle in reverse. Now, I want to read out what Gazelle says. Um, did I keep it open? Yeah. Um, it says, food allergies, insomnia, and racing mind. There's a lot on your plate, I think, this month that you're going to have to take care of. Um, and I think this feeling of having a lot to do is heavily on your mind. And you're just going to have to watch your sleep, I think, because... Obviously, when we've got a lot on our plate and we've got a lot of things to complete and get done and it's taking time because there's lots of obstacles in the way or delays or we feel like there's, you know, lots of blockages and it's preventing us from actually completing what it is that we're setting out to do. A lot of the time that can then impact our sleep because we're no longer going to bed thinking today I accomplished this, that and the other and I'm satisfied with that and I can rest easy knowing that tomorrow I can achieve X, Y, Z. We're going to bed and we're thinking, oh, you know, I wanted to do that today, but this got in the way and then I had this delay and then this got, and now I feel like I've not achieved anything and it's just going to get pushed back to this day and we can't relax. And so it impacts our sleep. We stop being able to sleep as well. And then obviously when our sleep isn't going to plan <laughs> nothing else does because we don't have the energy for it much like the fool in reverse so i think first and foremost rather than overwhelming yourself with the mountain of things that you have to get done or the responsibilities that you have to take care of that you're kind of thinking about all at once so that it's becoming this gin ginormous mountain that you have to climb Rather than doing that to yourself and overwhelming yourself that way, I think that what you have to do is just focus on one thing at a time. Simplify it. Really simplify it and prioritise. And tick things off as you go, like a list. Because seeing everything as a whole is only going to increase that sense of overwhelm that I think that some of you are feeling this month because of how many responsibilities that you have. And I think as well, for some of you, you're putting a bit of a time pressure on yourself. And I'm not sure if that's just the situation that you're dealing with that can't be helped, that there actually is a time pressure, or if it's something you have created yourself, that you're putting pressure on yourself when you don't need to because I'm looking at this eagle 
And, you know, this eagle, I think it's supposed to be a sun, but I always see it as a bit of like a keyhole. <laughs> and I kind of, I'm looking at this eagle and it's almost like it's going to try and get through the keyhole. And it's like, it's running out of time. Like this, this gap is going to close on the eagle and this eagle won't have made it in time. And so I feel like there's, like even when I'm speaking, <laughs> I feel like there's a bit of um, anxiety or pressure that's building. And um, I think that what's not being prioritized by you right now is the very thing that needs to be prioritized in order for you to be productive. And that is self-care. And you need to make sure that you are taking the time that you do have to balance out your busy schedule with self-care so that you then feel the benefits of that and can use that extra energy to complete your list, right? Because it all impacts the other. If you, I mean, I see it, so many people doing things this way and granted, a lot of people feel like they don't, they can't help it. Um, And I appreciate that everyone's schedules are different. However, I've, I've known so many people who have a busy schedule and the free time that they do have, rather than using that time to look after themselves, they'll fill it in with some other tasks that they need to do that could actually have waited, but they they fill it with that thinking, you know, I need to get this done. When actually what they're doing is burning themselves out. And so what then happens is that at some point they're drained. They don't have any more to give. And so all them tasks actually get more delayed as a result of them trying to get everything done at once. If they'd spread it out and given themselves that time for self-care, they would have actually completed the tasks quicker because they would have had the energy to do it and to do it properly as well. So this is all about avoiding burnout this month and viewing obstacles, any obstacles that you may face to get tasks done, see it as something, see it as an opportunity rather than an obstacle or a blockage or a hindrance. Blockages often happen for a reason. And in your case, I think that any blockages you do face are happening for a good reason. And that reason is to prevent you from getting overwhelmed and to, you know, give you some time to look after yourself. So with overwhelmed, it says, you are feeling like the world is on your shoulders right now. Everything has gotten a little too much. Just take it one step at a time and remember you are not alone. Reach out for help if you need to. And that's the other thing. A lot of people are not good at asking for help in whatever capacity that that is for you. A lot of people aren't good at asking for help. A lot of people feel like they become a burden when they ask for help. But if the help is there, if it's being offered, if there's an opportunity for someone to help you, take it this month because it will help you. It will stop you from feeling overwhelmed. Delegate, right? Learn how to delegate this month because it's really going to help how you feel. And how you feel is going to directly impact how well you succeed at getting all of these responsibilities taken care of, right? it affects, one affects the other. If you only focus on getting your responsibilities taken care of and you ignore your feelings, you ignore your health, all of it will suffer at some point because burnout will happen. If you prioritize self-care and make sure that you are taking time out to, you know, give yourself the time that you need to rest and don't think that you're on some kind of time pressure that needs to, you know, if you prioritize that self-care, you will accomplish your responsibilities in good time, but also in, you know, with good energy and you'll get it done properly. So I'm going to read out Overwhelmed. It says, we always assume that we must take on everything alone, but we don't. Whether you are overwhelmed with responsibilities or emotionally overwhelmed, you can always reach out to others for help. If you have taken on too much work, you can always delegate, right? 
delegate. Learning how to delegate is going to be, I think, your challenge this month. This is this is the card of what you need to work on, which is overwhelmed, which means there needs to be a smarter way for you to work and a smarter way for you to use up your energy that doesn't drain you and doesn't you know, lead to this feeling of being overwhelmed. If there is no one to help, then take a little time to break it all down into more manageable tasks and tackle them one at a time. It feels a lot smaller that way. If you are feeling overwhelmed emotionally, then reach out to those close to you. If you do not have anyone there for you, then reach out to strangers. There are so many support groups on and offline for people going through all manner of issues. They know just what you are going through and are always happy to share advice and support. All you have to do is ask. You are never completely alone. There is always someone who wants to help. So yeah, allowing yourself to be helped because all you ever have to do <laughs> when you're in this position is imagine it was someone that you cared about. Imagine it was a friend, a family member, a partner, who was going through something and they didn't share it with you and they didn't ask you for help, wouldn't you want them to? Wouldn't you want them to tell you what was going on? Wouldn't you want them to know that you were there to help? It's exactly the same for you. And you should give yourself the same credit that you give the people in your life and give yourself the same opportunities. So I feel like it's gonna be a busy month. I don't think you're gonna be bored. <laughs> I don't think you're gonna be bored. But I do think that if you don't find an easier or smarter way to work and to manage your responsibilities, you are gonna start to feel overwhelmed and it's gonna start to impact your sleep and your energy levels. So as a way to avoid that, as almost like a pre-warning, try and you know make a few small changes in advance so that it doesn't get to that point. Your advice is Rhino Spirit and it says overcome any obstacle. So again, you may experience a few obstacles this month, but if you do, see them as opportunities rather than as a hindrance because it's probably happening for a good reason. We always have the choice to press ahead and Rhino Spirit's strength offers you the power to break through stubborn obstacles. This animal spirit knows there is more than one way to open a path to what you seek. When Rhino Spirit appears, you are reminded that you have a marvellous ability to overcome obstacles in multiple ways. By going around them, shattering them with the force of clear, deliberate intentions, or even transforming them into clouds that drift away by refusing to allow them to limit you. Apply your rhin Rhino Spirit with creativity and no obstacle can stand. For you have magic to make and many ways in which to make it. Your power is awesome right now. And that makes sense because the eagle is very powerful. You can make whatever whatever you want to see happen, you can make it happen. It's just about how you do that that counts. Sometimes we think that all that's needed is action. That's all we need. To make things happen, all we need to do is take action. But we're human. <laughs> We're human, which means that we run out of energy. It means we get hungry, we get tired, you know, and we need to take these, these time out so that we can recover, we can rejuvenate and recharge. And if we don't do that, it's unlikely that we're going to feel motivated to get the tasks done and it's unlikely that we will be productive. Rhino Spirit also wants to remind you that when an obstacle appears to prevent you from getting what you desire today, it means that something much better is coming. Keep that in mind when you consider the nature of the obstacle in front of you. Great Spirit loves you so much and only wants the best for you. So yeah, I feel like... I feel like, you know, it's good. I think it's good to be productive. I think it's good to be busy. But sometimes we can go from one extreme to the other. And this is this feels like an extreme to me. And I think that if you do start to wane, if you do start to feel depleted, don't ignore the signs that your body tells you. If you need rest, if you need time to recover, listen to that. Because again, you're human and you're going to need a break sometimes. And you're going to need 
to rest and recharge and in order to give your best to achieve those responsibilities and tasks that you have that rest is not a luxury it's a necessity right okay i'm gonna stop preaching now (laughs) okay have a really good month guys and i will speak to you soon bye